Today we're going to build six secret safes to hide all your valuables using common household items. So whether you're looking to stash a house key or perhaps that wad of cash, here are six interesting ways to keep your objects secured in plain sight. We purchased pre-made versions of all the safes we're going to make just so we could compare homemade versions to the store-bought variety. You'll find a link to those in the description as well as a giveaway, so check that out. But kicking things off, let's build a book safe. Here we have a plastic store-bought version. It even contained a lockbox, which didn't make that much sense to us, because if someone found it, they could easily take it home with them and crack it open later. Also, we found the plastic to be just a bit obvious, so let's make our own using a real book. The first step is to go about 20 pages in and then clamp down the remainder of the pages. If available, grab a small container to measure out the size you want to cut inside the box, and then you can trace around it to have a starting point. We'll be gluing this inside the book once we carve into it. Get yourself a sharp cutting tool and very carefully begin slicing around the traced lines, removing 5 to 10 pages at a time. You don't want to cut too deep as you might run into snags. This might take a while, so put some coffee on the pot. Once you've hit your desired depth, Place your container inside to make sure that it fits well. Spread some glue on the container and put it inside until it dries. This is also going to help keep the desired form of the pages. Now wrap the book covers with some foil so that no glue gets on the outside, as that would sort of give away the fact that the book is more than it seems. Clamp everything together and put some clear drying glue on it. I used a small bottle of spray glue, but Elmer's or any household glue will work. Just coat the outer pages and spread it around using a brush. Once you're done, set it all out to dry for a few hours and then make sure to glue the back pages to the bottom cover so it doesn't move around. That's about it. Just put your nifty items inside the book and file it back on the bookshelf for easy keeping. No one will be the wiser. Can you tell the difference between these two Pringles cans? One's a diversion safe and the other isn't, but both contain real chips. This ordinary looking Pringles can remains sealed at the top but has a secret stash compartment at the bottom. You simply unscrew the bottom, stash whatever you want inside, and then screw it back on. We really like this diversion safe, so we decided to put our own spin on it. Get yourself a full can of Pringles chips, of any flavor really, and flip it upside down. You can use a can opener to slowly and carefully cut out and remove the bottom. The benefit of making your own stash can is that you get to decide how many chips to remove and how big you want your secret compartment to be. To keep the remaining chips contained in the top, we used cardboard to cut out a cylindrical platform and then hot glued it inside. This is going to leave enough room for a storage container. With a little trial and error, we discovered that a 4 ounce canning jar with an aluminum foil lid holds a good amount and fits snugly inside the bottom opening to form a slightly bottom heavy secure base in a convincing fashion. You can get your stash out with a set of pliers or a strong magnet. Works good for storing anything small and has great potential as a gift, novelty item, or just hiding a small stash in plain sight. Next up on the docket is the plastic bottle safe. While the manufactured version was superior to anything we could build ourselves, that doesn't mean you can't get close with about 10 minutes of effort. Get yourself a plastic bottle with a large label. The label is basically going to hide the fact that there is a hiding spot nestled in the bottle. You first need to get a small jar or container that'll fit inside the bottle once it's cut open. Try and get as close as you can to the diameter of the bottle. That way, when you set it up later, you can use less glue. Now empty out the bottle. If you're using a non-clear beverage, go ahead and save that liquid for later. Take a hair dryer and set it to high heat and low power. Blow the hot air around the glued area of the label until it becomes tacky and then carefully peel it off. Now if your bottle begins to lose its shape, then you might want to try switching to low heat. Once you're done with that, get a hobby knife and slice the bottle in the center to the best of your abilities. It doesn't have to be perfect as the label will hide most of this later. Get out some hot glue and trace around the bottom of your jar. You need to move fast here and get enough glue gooped up so that when you slide the jar inside, it'll adhere to the sides of the bottle, forming a seal. You can add the liquid beforehand, but I suggest cutting a small hole in the bottom afterwards, filling it from there, and then plug in the hole with hot glue. Follow the same steps for the lid of the jar in the upper portion of the bottle. You want to ensure a good seal. You can even run the tip of your glue gun around the plastic so that it melts around the lid. Again, the label's going to hide this anyway. Make sure that you fill your top portion with liquid while testing for any leaks. If it works, then you're ready. Take your label and carefully wrap it around the bottle while making sure to cover up all the handiwork that you just did. Your label should still have some adhesive on it, but if not, just add a little glue and it holds in place. Take your time and try and make it look as natural as possible and you're all set. Now you can remove the top and place items inside the jar. 
When you're satisfied, just seal it back up and pop it in the fridge or somewhere else no one will expect to find hidden items. This discreet sprinkler won't water your plants or cool you down on a hot day, but it's perfect to stash cash or spare keys. It's especially convenient in emergency situations. When up and close, out of the ground, you can tell this sprinkler head isn't real, but it's made from the mold of a real one with the exact same durable material. When you unscrew the top, you'll notice a convenient clip that attaches to the top and holds several keys. It doesn't take much to install it in the ground, it looks realistic enough and no one would ever suspect it as a hiding spot. But let's make our own. We purchased a real sprinkler head and unscrewed the top to remove everything inside. You'll notice that the top centerpiece conveniently pops right off. Place some super glue on the outside and then attach a string around it. Now carefully place it back on the cap and allow it to set while you tie a spare car key or house key to the end of the string. This design will serve the same purpose as the other sprinkler head. Only now we can attach the pipe adapter as a dummy stake to make it look even more legit. Simply install it in an inconspicuous area to create a virtually unnoticeable hiding spot for various items that could one day provide emergency cash or save you from being locked out of your home or car. Both of these sprinkler heads will blend into your yard easily and provide similar secret compartments at comparable costs. The main difference is that when using a real sprinkler head, you have the ability to add threaded attachments for added believability and security. Another great item to hide things in is your standard run-of-the-mill wall clock. Now we're giving five of these pre-made versions away, so make sure you're subscribed and click the entry link in the description box. If you want to make your own, the only requirement is that your clock will need some space in the back. I got a cheap picture frame at a dollar store and figured the backing would be perfect as a false back panel. By measuring out the back of the clock, I was able to quickly cut the cardboard backing down to size. You could also cut up an old cardboard box and paint it to match your clock, whatever works for you. Before placing the panel on the back, I wanted to add some small shelves inside to separate any items I might store inside. This was done by simply cutting more cardboard away and hot gluing it to the base of the clock. Next, we'll just need to attach the false panel while giving it the ability to open and close. I found a hinge in my junk drawer and it'll work perfectly. Stuff like this can be picked up for about 50 cents at any hardware store. Just attach the hinge to the clock and the panel with hot glue. Let it dry and you're ready to stow away your secrets behind time itself. Just place the clock against a wall or corner it so no one will suspect anything's out of the norm. And just like that, you have yourself a timeless ticking safe. We got a hold of this thermometer because it doubles as a place to hide your spare keys. It's a good product in theory anyway. It's easy to install and very utilitarian, but it's cheaply made and the false plate takes some getting used to. It does hold multiple keys, but because of that, it's big and bulky. It's more convenient for apartment living than sprinkler head or fake rock, but it can be achieved with basically any outdoor thermometer and very little tape. We kept our version simple with a small thermometer that attaches to glass with suction cups and just taped a house key to the back. The only downside of this style is that it only fits one key and may take some extra tape to disguise it from the other side. Either way, both thermometers are fully functional and can double as a place to hide your spare keys for under six bucks. But we hope you enjoyed our little trip into hiding things all over your house. Thanks for watching. You can find a link to all the devices we used in the description box along with a giveaway link. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this and hit that thumbs up button to let us know you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.